guys and welcome to my channel this is Eklan update video where in today's episode you will see all the amazing updates as usual but you'll also see a little preview you actually see a clip of how I actually fertilize my orchids so definitely stay tuned for that if you are new here welcome please hit that subscribe button followed by the bell so you never miss an episode I do these every single week so let's get started we are going to start with my Dracula orchid which is back here. So then hanging little guy here. So later on you will see how I actually fertilize this guy, which I just did. So everything is looking good with this guy. We got some new growth coming. We got old leaves dying off just like that. I just gently pull the leaves. If they're ready to go, they'll just come off just like that. So I don't do any forcing, I don't clip them. They want to come off they come off it's not a big deal so yeah that's basically what i do with the old dying leaves i don't really pull them off as you see they're just coming off nicely i just gently do that which is the same thing i do with my phalaenopsis orchis i gently pull on it and if it's ready to come off it'll come off if not it won't and later on you will see how i fertilize that guy as long with all the other plants that I currently have. So now we're going to go into my cactuses. I want to save my orchids for last because I like doing that. I have a lot of orchids right now. Um, if you're not following my vlog channel, you would see why I have lots of orchids at this particular point. Um, if you're not subscribed to my vlog channel, you should definitely go subscribe. It's a everyday look into my life, what goes on, what I do, all that fun stuff. So now we're going to go into my Easter cactus. And again, the link to my vlogging channel will be in the description below in case you would like to go check that out. So this is my Easter cactus. As you can see, it's doing wonderfully. It has lots and lots of new leaves and none are falling off, which is a definitely good sign, which means the soil is working, the fertilizer is working, everything's working on that one, which I totally, totally love. So now we're going to move on to my Christmas cactus. So this is the big guy that bloomed for me last season and everything is looking good if it's nice and warm in your area like it is in Florida. Right now it's like 73 degrees. So all you can expect in warm weather is just leaves and roots growing, which you can't really see roots growing, but you can definitely see the new leaves coming in. So we've got this one right here, which I'm trying to zoom in. Trying to get this guy to zoom in so we can see it. But there's a little bitty possible leaf right there. Which they come in, you can't really tell if it's going to be a leaf or it's going to be a flower. And so it grows a little bit more. But since it's the summertime, kind of, <laughs> in Florida, I'm probably going to say that's going to be a leaf in the next few weeks. So then we got my two smaller... Christmas cactuses right here as you can see they are growing nicely we've got this one growing this one does not have any new leaves that I can tell as of yet everything is looking good but this guy right here is definitely growing some new leaves we got one right there we got one right there we got one right there growing so everybody is looking good and what I do is I come in here and I check the water level on my orchids and then I just Put my fingers in one of these containers and if it's completely dry, I put some more distilled or rainwater in them or yeah, just put some rainwater. If they're not totally dry, then I just I just wait. I just wait another day until they're completely dry. I always wait till my Christmas and Easter cactuses are completely dry before I water them again. Because they're part of the cactus family, which means they don't need to be watered that often. And with the soil I use, which is miracle Grow Moisture Control, they get watered as it's needed so you don't have to worry about over-watering them, which is a big plus. So now we're going to move on to my Philanopsis orchis. We're going to start with this guy right here. This guy is growing quite well. We've got some roots coming in. What they like to do is they like to start with the roots, then they'll work on the leaves, and then they'll convert their energy into flower spikes. But this guy... It's very, very tiny right now. I don't know if you can see it. It's very, very tiny. But there is a little root coming in. So 
So now we're going to move on to my other ones that I have over here. And I will explain how I happen to get so many <laughs> at this time. Because if you were here last week, you would notice I did not have as many orchids as I do now. So now we're going to start with this guy right here. As you can see, this guy is doing quite well. We got these beautiful, beautiful flowers right here. So everybody's going, well, we do have this flower spike right here, but there's nothing, it's really hard to see because the leaves covering it, but there's nothing coming out of those just yet. But everybody's looking good. And the reason why I have so many orchids is because our local grocery store is going out of business sale, so they're marking these guys down. So when they get marked down, I buy as many as possible. But as the weeks go by, the item's gonna be marked lower and lower. And so hopefully I'll get a few more before the deal ends and the store closes. Now we're gonna move on to my other one right here, who is doing wonderfully. You see all the amazing flowers this guy has. We can see this one's dying off. I gently pull on these as well to make sure they're completely closed off before I take them. You can either pull them off gently and when they're ready to go they'll just fall off or you can just wait for them to fall on their own. I just rather do it myself because it keeps my area a little bit cleaner. I just gently pull and when it's ready to come it'll just fall off. I had a couple fall off today but as you can see this guy was another one I saved from the local grocery store that had that closing sale. So yeah, everything is looking good with this guy. The leaves are a little crazy because that's the way they ship them. I think they usually ship them with their leaves pulled up like that, so. I'm just gonna let this guy do what he wants with the leaves until it realizes it does not have to hold this shape anymore. I think once it realizes it doesn't have to hold that shape anymore, it will gradually have them lean down like they're supposed to. But everybody's looking good. This guy's looking good. The flowers are looking good. I really, really love Philanopsis orchids so much. Then we got this guy right here. It's another one I saved. These were the three worst looking ones because of the leaves, the flower spikes, and the root system. They were the worst. And as you can see, this guy has a little bud right there that's going to open any day now. Because once they see that they're getting lots and lots of water, um, the buds will open up within the next couple of days. Like the light purple one I showed you, it had a flower that bloomed like the second day it was here. So once it realizes it's getting a lot of water, it doesn't have to worry about that, it starts to bloom. So this guy's looking good. It's got the roots system looking good. You can see it's a little bit dirty it's because it was in the bark. And I changed that quite frequently so it's not in dirty water that long. But that's because it had bark. And it's... What you have to do when you first transplant it from bark media to water is you have to kind of change it every day until it doesn't do that anymore. But yeah, this guy's looking good. I got that one bud, gonna open soon. Um, I don't really focus on the flowers when I buy orchids now. I focus on the leaves and the root system. The leaves and the root system is pretty good. I will buy, like I said, these were the three worst looking ones. Which I know I can say them because I've done it in the past, which is why I have so many at this point. And what you'll see on them, it says, I add ice orchids. Um, don't do that. <laughs> I did that with my very first orchid, and in a matter of months, it died on me. Because it says, just add ice, which I would do. I just added ice. Until I realized it's not helping the orchid, it's actually killing the orchid. Because cold water to orchids actually hurts the root system quite a bit. So my first one died. And then I did research on it and I realized what I was doing was actually doing more harm than good to the orchid. So now we're going to move on to my shelf of orchids. Which this guy is doing quite well. We have this Kiki right here. It was doing pretty well. We got this nice root coming out and we got the leaves getting a little bit bigger than the previous leaves a little bit but it's all gonna be 
perfect in due time. The thing I found out about Kiki's is you cannot speed up the growing process. You just have to wait until they are ready to be separated from the mother orchid, which that one right now is not ready. Which as you can see on that one, it is not ready to be separated from the mother. So we just have to wait and let it grow, get a few more roots on it. It just has one root on it currently. So we have to wait until it gets a few more roots on it before I will separate it from its mother plant. So now we're moving on to this guy. He has this beautiful flower spike go in there and it has a leaf coming in right there. This nice root growing, this nice flower spike growing. Everybody is looking good. The root system is looking amazing. We got some more roots coming out. It's like one, two, three more roots coming out with this guy, which is amazing. I love it. Then we got this guy right here. It has this baby flower spike. This is the one I believe I got from a nursery. So this one is looking really, really good. The root system is doing really good. No new leaves as of yet, which I'm not really upset about it. As you can see, the bottom leaves are starting to yellow off. That's totally normal for the bottom leaves to do that. So this one will probably be the first to go because it's so leathery right now. It's drying up, which is totally normal. It's totally normal for the bottom leaves to shrivel up, get yellow, and fall off. That's totally normal. If it was the middle or top leaves, that would be a sign of concern of saying something is not right with the orchid. So we got this guy. This is my biggest one because it has such a big flower spike. You can just cut them back, but if it's not dying off like they normally do, I'm not going to really cut it until it tells me it's ready to go. The way you can tell if it's ready to go is if you squeeze it like I am right now and it's very papery, it's it's collapsing very easily, then it's ready to go. But right now, the, the this guy does not want to go. It wants to stay, I'm gonna let it stay. We also got a new root coming in. It's very, very tiny. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's very, very tiny. I just barely noticed it right there. So everybody's looking good, ready to see what's gonna happen with this guy. We don't know. Sometimes orchids can go dormant for a, a few years until it's ready to produce more buds. That's normal as well. Some orchids can go dormant for about two years is what I've researched, but I'm just going to let these guys grow the way they want to, and when they're ready to rebloom, they'll rebloom themselves. So we got this guy. It's another one I saved. Um, if you guys were here last week, you would know this guy had two flower spikes and lots and lots of roots that I had to cut off because they were dying. So everybody's looking good. This leaf wants to fall over like this. But all the buds on this guy have bloomed. Everybody's looking good. The root system is looking really, really good. So this is very, very exciting to see them just flourishing and how I treat them. So then we got this guy, which is my smallest one. As you can see, we have very roots everywhere with this guy, and this one just wants to lay over like this. It's totally fine. And then we got this Kiki right here. As you can see, it has one root in the water, and it has these two right here. But as you can see, the leaf is getting bigger from the previous. And that's what you can expect from Phalaenopsis orchids. The top leaves usually get bigger than the previous leaf. So that's how you know it's doing really good. It's in good health, this one's. It's all of its focus right now is on this Kiki. And once it has a couple more roots and they get a bit longer, because right now it just has one root in the water, I wanna get like at least a couple more to make sure it has lots of roots before I cut it off from the mother plant. So this one's almost ready to go. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside. I'm gonna show you the aloe plants outside and my rose bush outside and see how they are doing. I'll see you guys in just a sec. Here are all the aloes. There's mama aloe doing pretty, pretty well. 
and all of her babies are doing wonderfully everybody is looking good in a few minutes you will see how I fertilize all these plants out here because it's a little bit different than the way I do it inside here is my rose bush and as you can see I cut off the dead limbs and threw them away so this guy has a chance to grow but everybody's looking really really good and again in a few minutes you will see how I fertilize my outside plants Okay, oh yes, you just saw all the amazing print updates from outside. And now I'm going to insert a clip of how I fertilize all of my plants. And I'll see you guys in just a second.
Okay guys, that is how I fertilize all of my plants every couple of weeks. Um, you saw all the fertilizers that I use and how I mix it all together to fertilize all my plants that are inside and outside. All the links to all the fertilizers that I use will be in the description below. Also with a thermometer that I use for my orchids. So here is the thermometer and humidifier that I use. It has the current temperature, it has the humid humidity percentage. That way I always know my orchids are doing wonderfully in this environment. So for orchids inside, I think the humidity level should be around 42%. Right now it's 51%, so we're all good there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it, share it to grow our community, and subscribe if you are new here, and hit that bell so you always notified when I put out new videos, and I'll see you guys next time.